Hi everyone, it's Aisha Tuamore and welcome to the Making Your Own interview series. Um, I usually speak to self-starters who are starting up or scaling up their businesses who also happen to be on the Freelance Her 100 program with me. And the Freelancer 100 program is a business accelerator program supporting women from Greater Manchester who want to start up, scale up um, or test their ideas in the tech, creative, digital media space. And and um, today I have Viv Parry with me, who um, is not an attendee of the course, but is a mentee and an all round bomb professional woman who has so much experience and so much knowledge and was so sweet to offer herself up to me as a possible interviewee. And um, yeah, I would be absolutely, I'll, I would, yeah, I'll be absolutely crazy not to, not to have taken her up on her offer. So although it's not the regular kind of guest that I would have, it's a very special guest. And hi, Viv, welcome, welcome. Hi there, Aisha too. I'm loving your YouTube voice. Really, I know it's very it's different really to my good, casual voice. It? It's like, whoa, <laughs> where did she go? <laughs> I try, I try to make sure I, I, I articulate myself properly. And um, my, my, oh my god, my grammar is um is interesting. So um, I try my best to make sure I'm saying the things that are actually correct. <laughs> no, it was just like the the it sort of dropped a little bit, and I thought, oh, oh. okay, well, maybe I'll I'll try and I'll try and have a YouTube voice. I love it <laughs> but yeah so um, but, oh, um no, it, yeah it's, it's an absolute joy to be on here with you Aisha too you um, you. you sparked my interest right from the get-go so I'm, I'm a Yay. mentor on the program and mm. we have a, a Friday morning nine o'clock Friday morning session don't yeah. we along with um I think it's 10 other ladies yeah. yes um all over zoom which actually is it's a lot better than I would ever anticipate it was going to be because mm. I think we've managed to get a nice collaborative vibe going haven't we from my kitchen yeah. here <laughs> I know <laughs> I know I think I think you know you've got a very nice kitchen and this is why you do this, <laughs> you do this yeah here. yeah I don't really care about the mentoring it's just like <laughs> coming to my kitchen <laughs> <laughs> love it um but I think I do you know one of one of the things that I've really noticed with Zoom and I really appreciate being able to facilitate is that um you can you can have such different personality types on here so the introvert the type of person who wouldn't really speak up the person who doesn't like being seen you know like just different different types yeah, yeah. of people yeah. and it really gives them the space of oh, I can just pretend I've got technical issues and just go away. Or, yeah. you know, like if you're wary of faces, you can just choose to have like the active speaker and see one person rather than the hundred people I know. You know, who are I there. Know. So, um, yeah, I'm loving that. I'm, I'm really, yeah. really loving that. One of my daughters said about it from a, a socialising point of view that she actually preferred it in some ways because like if okay. you go for a night out with people, you've got to stay for the full night. <laughs> What's on a Zoom? You can, oh, sorry. Uh, what, 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 what? <laughs> oh, my internet seems to be going. Sorry. <laughs> but it's so, it's so true. Do you know what? And I really, um, I remember feeling as though I really missed out on, on life really when I was at university. Cause I was a very, I was really like, I was quite up myself when I was younger out to be honest. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm not going to the clubs. I'm here to study. <laughs> And I won't be, I would not be participating with such frivolity, you know, kind of thing. So I was really like, I was just so up myself. And so, and part of like what I, I realized was it wasn't necessarily the going out, but it's the idea of you go out and then if you're not having a good time, it's sort of like you have to make an excuse to go away and like an hour yeah, yeah. to get ready. And I was just like, it's all the bits in between the two hours of dancing you do. I know, it's just like, I know. <laughs> I know, I know exactly what you mean. I, I yeah. don't I don't make any apology for the fact I'm not really bothered. I'm quite happy to stay here. Well Thank done. you very much. <laughs> well done. Well done. Like I am, I am, yeah, I think I, I think it's um I thought I didn't care what people people think about me, but I re I came to realise as I got older that I care very much what people think about me actually, which is why I try to avoid them, because if I'm not around them. I can't hear their opinions and I don't have to yeah. deal with that. And it's I quite think, interesting. I think as you get 
even older um like me you actually the only thing that you have to really really care about is whether you care about yourself and the rest kind of just sorts itself out isn't isn't that something and I think um, I'm happy that I'm closer to that space now than um, I've, I've met some people who have come to that realization much, mm. much later in life. But I think I got to the point, especially this lockdown has been like a real crash course in loving yourself and taking care yeah. of yourself and yeah. having to confront yourself and just deal with yourself, which is part of my motivation to get on this program. Because a year ago, I wouldn't have had the confidence to even bother applying because I would have thought, it's not directly in my space. I don't have oh, really? the credentials and I'm not quite ready. And I, I've done a lot of sort of work throughout the last year, which is why I've got to the point where I was just like, actually, I want to move forward. And in order mm. to do that, I need to make a move. I need to take chances. I need to be in spaces that I wouldn't usually find myself and just push that forward. So I wonder how how you were attracted to join the program as a mentor in terms of what, what was your, what, what piqued your interest in terms of going, I'm going to give my time. I'm going to give my time to this because you do a lot, don't you? Yeah. And do you know what? I do it unashamedly because I love it. And, you know, go, going back to kind of the, the sessions that we have, there's something really lovely about the fact that you are all here in, on a screen in my kitchen and you know I can come back into the kitchen at another point in time and go oh yeah this is where I did the session so it's like it's almost like you're all here so it kind of fills fills my life up um but I just you you get up and you think what am I going to do today oh I've got a mentoring session and some people might take nothing from it but if one person takes something then there's been a purpose to my day hasn't there um, and I think if we can, if we, if we all conducted our lives like that and helped each other up and da da da, da wouldn't it be a better place? Um, and has I'm curious as to whether your valuing of being able to help people and influence people in that way because of your experience has that come from you having mentors or has that come from like a lack of mentors in your in your sort of life where you're feeling like you really want to pay it forward. It's it's probably more that I haven't had it and I can see how powerful it is because I've done I've done so many things in my life where the book stopped with me that you kind right. of you kind of get used to that and you just you I just see. take that as your normal state and you don't wow. think think about doing it differently. Um, and I just see lots of people who with great potential who with a bit of a bit of support and assistance and just Mm. even if it's just a validation to go oh actually yeah I am entitled to be in this room you know Mm. we don't we don't all have to agree with each other do we the point is are we there for each other and are we are we helping each other up or are we actually pushing people down and I and I think you know some people look at me and think that I'm not successful but it's wow. well, but it's about somebody's perception of what successful looks like. Of course. My my biggest success, I suppose my proudest achievement is my three daughters, because mm. they are three wonderful human beings, three strong, independent women. Well done. And, and I've had a part in in nurturing them and, and enabling mm. them to be themselves in all right. their glory. Yeah, because I haven't I haven't wanted to replicate myself in them. And I guess that's that's part of what the mentoring is. It's not going, yeah. oh, here's a b- bunch of women. I'm going to turn them all into me. <laughs> right. It, it's just not that at all. It's here's a bunch of people who've got massive potential. How can mm. I nurture that potential? And, and I that's think that's seen. Do you? Yeah, I think that's re- very much seen in the way that you do mentor on a, in a, on a practical level, because it's very much about drawing things out of, of people and then helping, helping guide 
their thoughts Mm. rather than a straight up I am here to get you to the next level in your career so in order to do that I'm aware of a template you must do this and that and that yeah which is a format that I've seen for mentoring which isn't entirely unsuccessful some people like that kind of hand-holding and and such but I think for a freelancer you really have the you need the tenacity to not to not need that kind of um to need that kind of hand holding and I think you do it quite well in terms of drawing things out of people and definitely um resolving negative self-talk I know that's a bit a big pet, oh pet yeah well, it, yours. it is it is because I've had a lot of negative self-talk historically right. um okay. and you know that can be quite painful mm. and and quite quite crushing and I if you can prevent that for somebody then then that's a gift as well isn't it and I'd I'd like to think that everybody feels a bit braver and a bit stronger as a consequence of sitting in the in the mentoring session I like I like how that's just like a thing you said casually as well it's a solid mission especially if you've got people you know someone who has had negative self-talk it is a hard thing to be convinced otherwise when you get stuck oh yeah yeah in yeah, certain yeah. modes it's just like you you don't know you don't know what's going on you don't understand and when that switch finally happens though when you realize the power that your thoughts have over your life yeah. it's an amazingly freeing thing like oh I can just say I'm awesome today and I'll probably be more awesome than I was you know like and that's yeah. that's all you need like, well it's it's self-fulfilling isn't it in the mm. same way that it can spiral down it can spiral up as well yeah so, so long as it's got something behind it you know there's no yeah. point going oh I'm yeah. awesome and actually well are you how, how what <laughs> why there's, there's got yeah. to be some truth to it hasn't there um yeah you know and I guess I guess on the on this program the point is mm. will some is can there be an exchange of the value mm. that you bring does somebody mm. want to buy that yeah but but part of the part of the valuing it has got to start with you. If you don't really believe that you're bringing value, then you're not going to be able mm. to convince somebody else, are you? That is so true. Authenticity. I think we mentioned that a lot at our mentoring mm. session today. Being authentic, um, and I think it's I think it's a real credit to the group of women who are on the program in general. Um, but speaking specifically of our group, it's really it's really great that they so want to work with integrity and truly bring, um, bring true value to other people. There's no sort of, Oh, I want to be rich. So I just want the quickest path to being, to being rich. They really want to bring something that's going to add value to someone else's life and enhance them. And that's so, it's lovely being in that type of space, you know, like just good people. It is. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think you've got to try and find those spaces somehow. And um, mm. you asked me how I ended up doing it, and mm. it's it's mainly because of Naomi Timpley, who's leading ah. the program. So she and I are really good pals, um, and she was she was doing the program. I just said, "Is there anything I can do to help?" And mm. and actually, because it's mentoring, it yeah, yeah, I like the fact that I'm helping her, but I also really enjoy doing it so why would Naomi <laughs> Naomi's got the connections hasn't she oh, I feel yeah. as though she could literally just make a solid living doing nothing else but just go in I know this person I'm just going to get you in touch <laughs> yeah yeah she easily. does she knows so so many people um but it was just it was just good fortune that I met her she so I I was previously working over in Leeds and I came over mm. to Manchester and yeah. she was one of the first people that I met but we kind of met as friends, not as oh, not as business as connections. Um, so it's and what is it that you what is it that you do right now? Like, what is the main thing that fulfills you in terms of your working right now? Because I know you um, do a lot. <laughs> yeah, I do a number of things. Um, so I have a role as a finance director in a manufacturing mm. company, which is great because I love manufacturing. Um, but I also love developing teams as well. Okay. So that, that kind of fulfills the nurturing, mentoring thing. I like to see, I like to put a really good process in place and then um, train people up in that process. Um, okay. So yeah, I, wouldn't, I would never go into an organization and expect it to look the same by the time I left. 
Oh, Otherwise, I like that. There'd be no point me doing doing my role. I have to feel like I'm there for a reason, and the change, change is required. And I can I can drive that I change. Can bring that. Um, that, that is go on <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was just saying that 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 is something that I've I found in my kind of work as well that as soon as I feel redundant in a space or if I feel as though I'm not able to bring value to that space I'm done like I'm just yeah. I'm just done and it's such and it's so amazing that I've met people who feel that way, but they stay in the role because, you know, oh, it's a paycheck or they're too scared to go somewhere else. But I find it absolutely soul crushing to be yeah. somewhere and feel as though I'm not bringing my special Aisha to value. Like if anyone else can do it, then someone else needs to come and do it. Because I, I, I yeah. and that is fairly egocentric, I think, to a degree like, oh, if I'm not the one. But um, uh, I think there's definitely value to. And I think it's really important for for sort of like your humanity to feel as though that you are a necessary presence. Yeah. Because to feel inconsequential, I can't, I can't imagine having that day in, day out in, in, in life in general, well, rather it, than just work. Yeah, it depends what your drivers are, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. some people like routine and respond well to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some people like change. Um, some people get used to change. I mean, my, my life's changed so many times, I can't tell you. Yeah. And but I think that's partly because I probably I probably encourage that. Right. Because I see. Because I don't like I the see. routine. It's... If I thought I was stuck in the same place, you know, yeah. doing the same thing, I wouldn't be very happy. And and also okay. I, th- I really like variety. Okay. So that one, that, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. One of the other things I do is I'm on the board of a charity. Um, oh I see and that's interesting too and the reason I did it was the charity is um a military museum that sits inside Carlisle Castle okay. and, and the rest <laughs> the majority of the board are veterans and I just thought one I want to do some trustee work because it is, right. it's nice to have that in your portfolio but also I want to do it in in a space that I know nothing about I see. because I, actually I think that's where you can bring real value because you ask the obvious questions about things that people assume because of their experience that is a given okay right I think that is so curious. I didn't realise you did on top of a lot of other things. You are also a trustee. And yeah. there's so much I want to unpick with you, but I know we've got limited time. So what I will um, what I will try to get some sort of scope on then is seeing as you raised three kids, yeah. not just one, three, <laughs> three daughters who are all sort of, um, they're strong, they're independent. And I, I imagine they're living the lives that they desire for themselves right now. How have you gone about, and this is a tough one to try and do succinctly, but how have you gone about building up to the woman that you are now while raising? Because I feel as though a lot of things must have started brewing up from when they were young and raising them for you to get to this point where you're empowered to do work that fulfills you. Where, where, how is it that you've like struck that balance or prioritized the right things, I guess, to get you yeah, to this space? I don't, I don't think that, it was planned particularly but I think <laughs> I think I have the acceptance that as a woman you you can you can have everything you absolutely can but you can't necessarily have it all at the same time so I I made a decision that I would be at home with the girls for, right. for their first first years and I, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, I did other stuff at the time to sort of stimulate my brain, like I did a couple of A-levels and things like that. Right. Um, but once the youngest was at school, I thought, right, back to work right. now. And, and it was hard. I, I um, bought a business out of liquidation, a manufacturing business, and grew that at the same time as I was a single mum to these three gorgeous girls. Wow. And it was it was a juggle it was a massive massive juggle um but it was worthwhile because I I was partly driven by the fact that hang on I've got three girls here I can't be a stay-at-home mum for the rest of my life because what does that tell them 
Right, I see. That doesn't tell them that actually, if you've got the ability, you go out there and you work hard mm-hmm. and you earn, you earn a living. So I wasn't going to bring them up with that kind of role model. I had, you know, I wanted to work to show them that it was a good mm-hmm. thing and a valuable thing. Um, and it's funny, I've had conversations with them about what it felt like from their perspective. Right. And one of them, which I, I think is is probably a kind of moral for, for people who are at the stage of having young children and working and trying to juggle it all, that my middle daughter said to me, you know, she, she never felt like I was doing anything wrong. What okay. she felt most was, what can, what can I do to help you? Because oh, she, wow. she could see how busy it all was. But actually, she, she didn't know what to do to make it easier or how to help. And it's kind of like we absorb all, we think we have to absorb yeah. all the guilt of the situation. Yeah. But actually, what's going on in their heads? What, what are they thinking about? And do they want yeah. to help? And do they want to be a part of you it? You don't realise. You think you need to, like, I'm their mother and they haven't asked for this life, so I need to sort everything yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Somehow they're, they're getting less because of the decisions that we've made. But yeah. actually... Looking back, looking back on it now, and they they would agree with this. They wouldn't have had mm. it any other way. They loved Aww. the fact that I had my own business. They got to be in that business as well, and it was a big part of their growing up. Wow. Um, so it's you don't have to go. Oh, the suffering is a consequence of my decisions. Of course, actually, you see that they're not. They're, they're actually benefiting massively it's enhanced them it's enhanced them as individuals right well I think I think you maybe maybe you got really good practice with your three girls in enhancing individuals and you've moved onwards this point where you're enhancing people like me and bringing such value to our lives and it's so so appreciated so I thank you so much no you don't need to thank me it's just I really, really appreciate it. And I was going to give one last challenge before I said um, goodbye for the day. When I've looked on your LinkedIn profile, you've got so many forward slashes. I'm going to challenge you to tell me how many. (laughs) Can you remember every single one of your roles that you've put on your LinkedIn profile? I'm I'm going to guess probably 10. (laughs) Is it 10? No way. No, um, I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna get you to list them out because. Yeah. Okay, I could cheat and get my LinkedIn out. Um, <laughs> no cheating. Finance director, storyteller, mentor, mm. coach, trustee. Uh, oh, now I'm struggling. No, I can't get any more. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you put podcaster on there. Podcaster, as well. oh yeah, my podcast. How could I forget that? I'm about to I know. record one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love I love the yeah. podcasting. I don't know whether that's a a vanity thing, but I've really I've yeah. really enjoyed it. Really, really oh. enjoyed the podcast. Well, you know what? I really I really hope people get to listen into it because it really brings it brings such value. It's called in... um, Be Amazing at Home and it's I'm... on all the usual podcast channels. And it's just, nice, it's nice. basically just a chat. It's a chat with good people is all it is. And that's valuable. I love hearing good chats. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate You're it. You're very welcome. I can't, wait. You too. I can't wait to share this story with everybody. Oh, so can, no. Can it's see been, this side of you too. It's been so good to chat to you. I could actually carry on chatting all day, but... We don't get paid for that, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. Oh, take it easy. Oh, you take care. It's been so good to talk to you and I look forward to seeing you next Friday.